Okay, hi everyone. So I am Jessica, VP of Events here at the YEI. And welcome to the opening ceremony of the YEI's second annual Econ Olympiad. Whether you're, whether you're tuning in from a different time zone, a different country, or a different side of the globe, or simply just getting up early and setting aside your time to join us today, we're really glad that you all could make it here. Our entire YEI team really appreciates the time you've put into forming a team and the time that your team will soon put into researching about, brainstorming for, and finally creating your presentations. With this being our second time holding a competition in this format, we truly hope that you'll enjoy what's to come. And of course, can't forget, I'd like to give a big thanks to the rest of our YEI team for making this competition possible. If you like our programs, events, and competitions like Econ Olympiad, you can head to our website for more information on how you can join our team and work to make events like this possible. Because we know many of our competitors couldn't make it to this event, our webinar will be fully recorded and published on our YouTube channel. And just search up Youth Economics Initiative later this afternoon and you should be able to see it. And now I'll be passing it on to Anita to get us started with today's events. So now on to today's raffle prizes. Let's get excited because for this year's Econ Olympiad, we will be raffling off Black Beats headphones and a $25 Amazon gift card today. And at the closing ceremony, we'll be raffling off a white Polaroid camera. So if you're ready to look cool in some new beats or splurge on a little something on Amazon, fill out the form through the tiny URL on the screen. After the speaker's presentation that we will be having in a few moments finishes, we'll be putting in the questions based on the information covered into the form. So hold on off on submitting for now and listen closely and you'll have a chance to win. Again, we'll be putting in the questions during the speaker's ceremony, seminar. So please refresh the form as we go along and we'll give everyone time to finalize their answers and submit after the talk. Everyone here today is invited to participate. And this is just a huge thank you from all of the team members at the Youth Economic Initiative for you guys all being here today. Alrighty, before we get started, I just wanted to do a quick introduction and open this event. So, hey, y'all, I'm Ian Chen, co-founder and CEO of the Youth Economics Initiative, and I'm excited to welcome you all to this year's iteration of Econ Olympia. Um, before we get started with all the logistical details and all the presentation aspects, I want to share with you a brief story, which I hope accurately captures why I love economics, and I hope you'll find a little bit of your own experiences within my own. Let's get started. Winding the clock back to last weekend, I'm sitting at my desk facing a conundrum. On one hand, I could diligently grind out my Econ Olympiad opening speech, an exhilarating proposition, to say the least. Or I could curl up with my favorite book, A Tough Decision. So in my infinitely rational wisdom, I run an in-depth cost-benefit analysis, weighing the opportunity costs and possible benefits of each action. But come on, who really does that? Enter my third choice, find out more about why we make decisions the way we do. Just like many of you, my economics journey began with a quirky life experience. One afternoon, as I walked into an economic club meeting in my school, I watched as the presenter took raw data collected from a survey conducted among our club members just the week prior and transformed it into colorful lines on the whiteboard. The purpose? To find the best price for selling Bobo to students at school fundraisers using supply and demand curves. And almost like magic, the graph revealed to us that the optimal price was $4.93. Before, I had often struggled with making decisions. My introduction to economics allowed me to realize that I had an access to a framework that could help me thoroughly and effectively analyze all the choices I had at hand. Not only that, Economics provided me with the tools I needed to battle the chaos and understand the way we think. Life didn't have to be a blind guessing game anymore. From that moment on, I was hooked by economics and knew I had to find out more. I poured over Principles of Economics, which is in fact a very good textbook, and listened to the Free Economics Radio podcast every day on the way to school. I absorbed guest lectures from university professors like a sponge, reading Thinking Fast and Slow Before Bed. I learned about our decision-making process and a cognitive biases, such as the availability bias and loss aversion. Understanding the way I think made me calmer. It made decision-making easier. 
The more I understood about behavioral economics, about how choices are made and how the presence and effects of judgment biases, the more I craved to know. What was Kanye West's line of reasoning behind running for the presidency? Should I write my Econ Olympiad opening speech? As a result, I reflected on the choices I've made, trying to pinpoint the exact line of reasoning behind each and every one of them. And now back to the question from the beginning of the speech. Should I actually be working on this opening speech or should I be doing something else? To create meaningful predictive models in a society of nearly 8 billion people, economics must rely on concepts and assumptions such as homo econ economicus, the ideal e rational economic actor. And yet our daily experience shows that this utterly rational actor doesn't always exist. That's where founded rationality comes in. Popularized recently in behavioral economics, it poses that although we try to act rationally, we are impeded by our own biases and cognitive abilities, limited time frames, and the asymmetric distribution of information. In other words, rationality is in fact actually limited at, as we as individuals make decisions. This iterative approach about developing the field of economics is what fascinates me the most. Starting with assumptions of how we act when we're distilled down to our intrinsic wants and needs, economists are constantly using practical observations to refine and add new layers to the grand economic model. While the model is never perfect, Economics provides a practical perspective on the people, places, and products that surround me. Economists see what others don't, flawed logic, consequences, and opportunities. While I probably still won't complete a comprehensive SWOT analysis the next time I'm debating what outfit to wear, white hoodies and black pants, or black hoodies and white pants, I hope you'll enjoy exploring economics as much as I do, and welcome to this year's Econ Olympiad. Thank you, Ian, so much for that wonderful speech. Uh, hey guys, I'm Cheryl. Um, I'm the CEO here at the YEI. For those of you who don't know, I'll briefly go over like what we do here at YEI. Um, so for like m most students, economics can be like abstract and hard to understand. Um, so we set out to change that by bringing students passionate about economics together and empowering them to learn, spread their knowledge to their peers and make a lasting impact on their community. So our like main program is our Econ Clubs program. With over 80 clubs across six continents, YEI is the largest coalition of high school economics clubs, and we pride ourselves on being the premier launchpad for aspiring economists. Through our Econ Club program, we connect students and build an energetic and driven community of young economists. We provide high school students, which most of you guys here today are, um, with the tools and resources to found their own Econ Clubs, including a 40-module curriculum set, learning portal, marketing materials, and guidance from the YEI team. We also offer a lot of opportunities for individual students as well. Um, our econ talks give members like a chance to connect with industry professionals, Nobel Prize lawyers, or like business leaders. We have career and college fairs that give an inside look at where you can go with economics. And through our FLIP volunteering program in partnership with the Bank of America, we empower our student leaders, which could be you guys, to educate their communities and make a real difference. And of course, we host competitions like the one you are at today, and Econ Bowl in the fall, to give you a chance to test out your economics knowledge. At the core, our mission is to empower high school students with the tools they need to become future leaders, economists, and entrepreneurs. If you're interested, you can find out about all of more about all of our YEI programs that we, we do at the.yei.org. Um, and next, Coven will explain a little more in depth on how you can start an econ club at your school. Hello everyone, I'm Kavin, VP of YEI Clubs Program. I would like to introduce our clubs program that we offer at the YEI. For all of you that are currently not part of a YEI club, I highly encourage you to start one at your school. We currently have 80 plus clubs with over 3,350 members from all across the world. Starting a YEI club has many benefits at your school. For example, you get access to our AB, a, AP and IB curriculum with slides, worksheets, engaging activities, and more for you to host during your meetings. Additionally, your club gets access to exclusive YI events that are open to members of clubs. Lastly, we provide excellent opportunities for you to network with like-minded individuals through events like Econ Bowl and our club Discord. We also have many professors from distinguished universities like Stanford who give presentations on economic topics. If any one of you, if any of these interest you, I'll explain the steps for founding a YI club. 
So if you guys are interested in starting your own YI club, here are the steps that you need to take. First of all, please visit our website to fill out a club registration form. After that, a staff member will contact you to set up an onboarding call. During this onboarding call, we will explain the partnership and how we can best support your club and set your club up on a pathway to success. And finally, you'll be able to launch your YI club for students at your school to join. We will guide you through every step of the way throughout your journey to make sure that you are successful. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll put my email in the chat for you guys to reference. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Evangeline, an event coordinator here at the YEI, and I'll be taking us through our schedule for today. Econ Olympiad is a two-part competition. There will be a presentation round followed by a debate round. There's also an opening ceremony, which we are currently at, and an awards ceremony in April, as shown and pictured in the schedule. Econ Olympiad starts today, March 19, 2022, and will last until April 23, 2022. For today, the opening ceremony will last until 9.30, followed by a speaker presentation, which will last until 10.30. We'll then have the raffle at 11, and finally at 11.15, prompts will be announced. We would like to thank the Wen and Young Family Foundation for being our sponsor, and we thank them for making Econ Olympiad possible. Okay, so now I'll be taking us through the next part of our opening ceremony. So participating in Econ Olympiad allows you to think critically about economic issues in the real world, along with collaborating with group members to find solutions. But aside from that major benefit, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth place teams will each be awarded major cash prizes to be split among members. The winning team will take home a prize of $1,000 in cash. Second place will win $500 in cash. Third place, $400. Fourth place, $300. And fifth place, $200. The top teams will be decided through a combination of presentation round and debate round scores. So the top teams who advance from presentation will move on to a debate round. And now we'll be taking a quick break and we'll be coming back at around 9.25. Okay, so, but before we announce our raffle winners, we will actually be going over our prompts first. So for our prompts, we will be having two of them this year. So groups will have 20 days to research, collaborate, and record their presentations on the following two questions. So the first one is analyze the causes of and solutions for increased income inequality since 1900 in the US and or the United Kingdom. And for our second prompt, we have how should local governments address housing shortages and housing, housing costs in their cities? Your team will have up until April 8th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time to submit your video, and we will have further instructions on how to do that put up on our website and also emailed out to everyone. Okay, and now for our presentation round. So as you've already seen, there are two different prompts to choose from. Each team of three to four members will present a pre-recorded video presentation with relevance to a provided prompt. So presentations must adhere to the following guidelines. All members must have their cameras on while presenting. Each member shall have equal speaking time in conjunction with the other members. Each presentation has a 10 minute limit. So teams that go above this risk receiving two penalty points off and moments of silence and misspeaks are included within the 10 minute limit. We will also be releasing further instructions in the form of a mini video later today. So you guys can keep an eye out for that. 
And now for the judging breakdown. So each part of your team's presentation carries a different weightage with the thesis being 10%, the delivery accounting for 20%, reasoning carrying the heaviest weight at 60%, and finally, yeah, evidence will be 10%. The number of total points is 40, so take that into account. And presentations will be scored by our panel of judges, including Professor Dinnerstein from U Chicago, as you guys probably know, um, David Arnold from UC San Diego, and also Professor Lawrence White from NYU. And now we'll be moving on to Q&A. So if you have a question, you can either type it into the chat or you can also raise your hand and we will unmute you. So I see a hand currently raised and um, yeah, you can ask your question. Cassie? Uh, sorry, it was by accident. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, we have another. Could you please share the presentation with the prompts and guidelines? Ian, would you mind going back to our previous slide? So before that, yeah. So these are our guidelines, and our prompts will be put up on our website. So. Make sure that you guys take a look at those and then they will also be emailed out. So one of them is more microeconomics related and one is more macroeconomics. And for this, there are two prompts to choose from and you only answer one. So you make one video instead of two. Yeah, and also I see another question. If everyone is near each other, can we record an in-person presentation with all of us? Yeah, you can definitely do that. Just make sure that all of you guys are in the video and you guys have similar amounts of speaking time. Let's see. Any additional questions? Um, yeah, so one video should cover, wait, one video should cover the solution and reasoning for both prompts. No, so again, your one video should cover the solution and reasoning for one prompt. So you're just picking one of the two. Don't answer both because they are unrelated questions and our judges will score based on our rubric. And will the debate round basically be a debate over which of the group's system is more effective? Albert, would you like to answer that? Uh, sorry, I don't have my uh, video, but... The debate, the debate round is basically just a debate over like, we give you an issue and then we tell you to debate whether or not that issue is like debate on one side of that issue and basically try to convince the judges that uh, your way of viewing this issue is more economically sound than the opposing view. Yeah, and to elaborate, winners who like move on to the debate round will be able to access the prompt and have one week to prepare for it. So you guys will be doing a prepared debate and it'll be you taking you and your team taking a stance on a question and it'll be different from the two prompts that we currently have. Any additional questions? How many teams advanced to the debate round? Albert, do you want to answer that? Uh, there are going to be four teams on the debate round. And 
there are going to be like two brackets. So first there's going to be like two semifinalist brackets, and then there's going to be a third round with the winners of the two semifinals uh, competing for the final round. Yeah, so what this means is that since we have five different prizes, the four, the top four places will be receiving the top four prizes, and then the fifth place one will be chosen from our presentation round. So if you don't make it to the debate round, that is okay because you will still have a shot at being our fifth place winner. For our first prompt, do we just present the analysis or need to include solutions as well? Um, Albert, would you like to also answer that? Uh, for the first for the first prompt, you need to do both present the analysis and include solutions. Okay, so I think that was most of our questions. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any additional questions, we can answer that through email or yeah you can just reach out to us at events at the yea.org and do all members of the team participate in the debate round so yes all members of your team will have to be present and um yeah okay so now we will be moving on to our next Okay, so to choose our winners, we will be using a random number generator. And for our first number, we have number 64. And this corresponds to our competitor, competitor Danny Yuen. So we will be reaching out to you. And you are the winner of our Beats raffle. So congratulations on that. And for our second drawing, we have number six, and this corresponds to Deshaun Reddy. So Deshaun, congratulations. You are the winner of our $25 Amazon gift card. Yeah, so for the two of you, you guys will be contacted by us through email, and we will work out details of getting your prizes to you. Okay, so now I'll be going over some key dates to note down for Econ Olympiad. On March 19th, which is today, we have our opening ceremony and the present presentations will be due by 11.59 Pacific Daylight Time on April 8th. And I think Jessica will be dropping the registration link in the chat. Um, after submitting your presentations, we will announce the selected qualifiers for the debate round on April 16th with our social media accounts. And Econ Olympiad will be wrapped up with our debate round and award ceremony, which will take place on April 23rd. Best of luck to all our competitors, and we look forward to seeing the amazing presentations you guys put together. If you have any other further questions about Econ Olympia, don't hesitate to reach out to us on, on um, any of our following platforms, which includes our email, which is events at the yi.org, our Instagram at the dot yi, or our Discord, which is linked on the slide. Well, once again, thank you guys so much for coming, and we can't wait to read all and watch all of your presentations. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming today.